If I could make only one noodle dish for the rest of my life, this would be it. So we're pretty obsessed with noodles, right? And you know, no one more so than Robin. Like anytime we go to a restaurant, if there are noodles on the menu, that is the first thing we're ordering. So when one of our brilliant team members came up with this recipe, I'm not exaggerating when I say that our whole team has become obsessed. Like we've been making it for ourselves at home, but we've also been making it for our friends and family, and everyone's been asking for the recipe. Kind of been hanging on to it for a little while because I wanted to save it for a special occasion, but I just kind of can't wait anymore. So today, we're gonna make this incredible chow mein recipe. Let's get started. Cheers. <laughs> The soul of this dish is in the sauce. It's the elixir that makes everything taste so delicious. Now I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. Come here. The golden formula to creating an incredible sauce lies in four things. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that there is a dash of salt, a splash of fat, a little sprinkle of acid, and also a little something sweet. So let me demonstrate. We're gonna start with adding three tablespoons of soy sauce to a jar, along with half of a crushed vegetable bouillon cube. Next, we're gonna add two tablespoons each of water and toasted sesame oil, and two teaspoons of cornstarch. This is just for its thickening properties. And then we'll add two teaspoons of agave syrup, or you could use sugar or maple syrup. And then lastly, we're gonna add a teaspoon each of rice vinegar and sriracha hot sauce. Now just whisk everything together, and voila, a sauce that's ready to steal the spotlight. One of our previous videos was a ramen wars, another noodle video between my sister and my husband Robin. And in that video, my sister was chopping, I think it was shallots, and I was so nervous for her adorable little fingers that she was gonna chop them off. You gotta, you gotta tuck your fingers, sister. Just which one? <laughs> I'm all nervous. <laughs> I don't know how to cut onions. <laughs> so we've never actually properly done a knife skills kind of teaching in any of our videos. I'm gonna take a brief moment to share some knife skills with you right now. It's really important for this recipe that you have all of the veggies chopped and ready to go because once you start cooking, things go very quickly. Before anything else, just make sure your knife is as sharp as your wit. A sharp knife is a safe knife. Now let's learn how to first dice an onion. We're gonna first cut off the top of the onion, slice it lengthwise, and then peel it. Now the root, this stays put. It's the onion's anchor, it helps to hold everything together. Now as you slice, adopt the claw hand pose so your fingers are always tucked, safety first. Your knife is always gonna rest against your knuckle. Then we're gonna slice lengthwise, getting as close to the root as possible. And then optionally for finer pieces, a horizontal cut or two adds finesse. And then you can start to dice it up. At the very end, when you get close to the root, just give it a flip and slice the bits that are around the roots, and that is how you dice an onion. Now to slice the onion, you can go ahead and chop off the root, and then slice lengthwise to create long and delicate strands. Any way that you wanna cut your onion for this recipe works perfectly. I'm personally gonna choose the sliced version. Next, we're gonna mince two cloves of garlic and then we're gonna julienne two carrots. Whenever you're cutting carrots, always start by creating a flat side. This helps to create a stable surface so that the carrot doesn't roll around as we're cutting it. Then we're gonna cut it into very thin slices. Again, fingers are always tucked. And then gather a few of those slices, stack them on top of each other, and then use your knife to cut them into lengthwise matchsticks. And this is Napa cabbage. You can use any cabbage you want. This is a Chinese cabbage that I think works especially well in this recipe. I love the way the texture feels when it gets cooked down. Does that feel weird to say how the texture feels? Anyway, we need a cup's worth of this thinly sliced. That was way too much energy, right? Yeah. Can you tell I had a lunch break in between? <laughs> Next, we've got a head of bok choy that we'll thinly slice, just separating the white stems from the dark leafy greens. I usually then like to cook the white part first, because usually it takes longer to soften, but then the greens I add closer to the end. It's kind of like spinach, it just needs a couple of minutes to soften, but you'll see that in action in a sec. And then lastly for the protein source, I've got some mock vegan chicken pieces that I'm gonna tear into shreds, but if you'd prefer, you can always just fry up some tofu instead. Now everything is prepped, it's showtime, we can start cooking. If you do have a wok, ideally use that, otherwise a saute pan also works great. 
So we're gonna start with cooking the vegan chicken pieces and just a little bit of oil until they're golden. Then you can transfer to a plate and set this aside for now. Then we're gonna add some more oil to the pan and this is where the onion and garlic take center stage. We're gonna cook this up until the garlic becomes golden. Then the spotlight shifts to our cabbage, carrots, and the white stems of the bok choy. We're gonna cook this until the veggies soften, leaving a little bit of bite to the carrots. While the veggies cook, we're gonna to start to cook our noodles. We're using chow mein noodles, of course, but if you have another noodle variety you like to eat, then feel free to use that instead. Just be sure to check the ingredients, though. If you're plant-based, sometimes these can contain eggs. So we're just gonna cook these up according to the package instructions, and then when they're done, we're gonna drain them, rinse them under cold water to stop the cooking process. Back to the pan. We're gonna add the chicken pieces and the bok choy leaves. Just give this a stir so that everything is heated through, and then you can add in the noodles. Optionally stirring this in for about 45 seconds to a minute, and then lastly, we can pour in the sauce. One thing you wanna be careful not to do is to just add the sauce and then serve it up right away. There was, if you remember, cornstarch in the sauce and that needs at least one to two minutes on the heat to properly thicken up and that's also gonna give our noodles this beautiful glossy finish. All that's left now is to add the finishing touches. So we're gonna garnish this all with some toasted sesame seeds and green onion. Next time you're craving a noodle fix, this is gonna be your go-to recipe. I promise you're gonna be making it again and again for yourself, for your friends, and your family. You'll see. Hey, cheers. <laughs> How excited are you? Very excited. Salivating. Do Although it. we do have this every week. So. <laughs> we do. We have this all the time. Well, hey, thanks for hanging with me today, friends. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. It always really actually genuinely helps to support the channel when you do. If there are any noodle dishes that you love that you want us to experiment with or to veganize, let me know what those are in the comments. In the description box is where you can find the breakdown to this recipe. And thanks for hanging with me today. Really appreciate it. Pickup Limes signing off and... We'll see you in the next video. <laughs> We're seriously obsessed with noodles. No one more so than Robin. Robin. I almost said ramen. You practically are ramen. Okay, yeah. mm. I don't know. I just, I have so much energy. Do you know that if you chop properly, you can chop without looking. What's up? Down. Because your fingers are tucked. So then it's safe. You want to see me do it again? No, you don't care. <laughs> How's it been? Look at this. No, this is my good side. Uh, is this, this is my good side now. When you use a dull knife and you slice into an onion, it damages its cell walls. That releases these compounds that go into the air that irritate our eyes. So a sharp knife helps to mitigate that. It's, you're still gonna cry. You're just gonna cry less. You know what I'm so, saying? Robert said something really mean to you, right? <laughs> right. That, exactly. <laughs> okay, ready?